to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Understanding there is no amount of education that can cause a man to understand scripture. You can understand the principles of life. The Bible says, then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Understanding is a miracle. It's as much a miracle as healing. It's as much as a miracle as every other miracle in the Bible. The goal of the conference is not just to come and see anointed men and women of God teach, but I believe I share your pastor's passion and the organizers together that it's an opportunity for God to be able to pour something in our lives. Are we together? We were discussing with your wonderful pastor whilst we were coming from Lagos. And we're just talking about the move of God and the role that this city and this state has played. And I told him something. I said, Lagos is a child that was born by Abel Kuta. Spiritually. It's true. It's true. Abel Kuta is Abraham and Lagos is Isaac. So you see the glory of Abraham through Isaac. Are we together? There is a spiritual heritage of the finger of God upon this land. It's true. So many of you, if you found yourself in this meeting, you were called. You never came on your own. If you found your, you, you will need to be spiritual to understand the miracle of hearing a shofar like this in the spirit. It doesn't matter the physical coincidences that manipulated themselves to bring you here, but that you were in this meeting is a sign that you had a sound in the spirit. Are we together? Praise the Lord. We were so blessed yesterday and even this morning. Um, I want to talk very briefly on God's end time agenda. Let's, let's, it's, it's going to be I'm going to be saying a lot of things just for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is not strange in the body of Christ right now, please listen carefully, how that prophecies have come and several individuals spanning hundreds of years have prophesied about what we call the move of God a time in the church age where once again as it was in the old there will be such an outpouring of the power the spirit the grace and the glory of God and so we've had all kinds of prophecies uh, but like Pastor Paul you were saying yesterday I was so blessed let me start by creating a hunger in us to press for experience more than the potential of a thing. The church is full of propositions of potentials, but we hardly enter the reality, the substance. So we know what God can do. We know what God should do. We know what should be when what is right is right but our lives are never testaments of the reality of that experience. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 1. He said, the Bible says he came to him and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And Jesus tells Nicodemus, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man, listen carefully, be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Then Nicodemus says, "Ah, can a man enter his mother's womb again and be born a second time? And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the spirit, 
he said he cannot enter. Enter. That you see Canaan does not mean you experience Canaan. So many people keep seeing. Wonderful. Seeing is important, but it only prepares you for experience. You can see and never enter. My challenge to the body of Christ has always been to pass beyond the realm of just knowing that this should happen. To coming into a point where your life, your life becomes an epistle, an experience of that reality. And I believe that this is what God is helping us to do in this conference. Get dissatisfied with knowing what should happen and never stepping into it. I know that men should carry the power of God, but I hope it will happen one day. No. I know my church should grow, but I'm, I know one day it will happen. I know I should be sound and mighty in scripture, but I hope one day it will happen. No. Herein is our Father glorified. John 15, the Bible says, and verse 8, it says, When ye bear, like Pastor said, much fruit, much fruit, not leaves, there must be an evidence. No one comes under a tree to get leaves. You come under a tree because of the fruit. Are we together now? So as, as you hear men of God teaching, including myself, please don't just settle with that crave to hear what is new, what is the Greek, what is the Hebrew. Let's hear what apostles will say. Let there be a desperation in your heart more than adding to your ministry notes, more than adding to the notes you will run back to your fellowship to go and teach. Let there be a hunger. Lord, bring me into this experience. Bring me into it. Are we together? Bring me into it. Men can be called into an experience. The Bible calls it um, the fellowship of the mystery. Fellowship. Like occult, where a man is invited, come, join a fraternity together with the realities that exist in that fraternity. Men can be called by the spirit to come into a dimension of spiritual understanding that may be strange, but is potent and can deliver to us the results we desire. It's not enough to just speak English and talk and hope that what we are saying is right. There must be a level of persuasion that is a product of an encounter. So you are not just speaking because you hope it will convince people. You are bringing a reality that is higher than science, higher than any man's imagination. See, when you come from that standpoint, no matter how hardened that heart is, it must be touched. Nobody will come under that atmosphere and go back the same. Either for the better or for the worse, but never the same. Are we blessed? Praise the Lord. So our hearts must be open just like the men and women of God around have been sharing, pouring their hearts. And um, so I want to talk a bit about God's end time agenda because you see, let me, let me describe something to us. The anointing of the spirit. Listen, we'll talk about that in the evening. But the anointing of the spirit follows his word. The anointing of the Spirit does not move independent of the Word of God. This is the technology. The anointing of the Spirit follows where the Word of God is. Not where the Word of God like the Bible is. The emphasis of God is where His anointing goes. So if the Word of God is coming for healing, the anointing will not be found doing any other thing. If you want to find the anointing, you must be positioned where the Word for healing is. So if the Spirit of God is saying to the churches that is the season of revival, then the only anointing that can be accessed is the anointing for revival. If you are not found within the zone of that word, you will not be featured in that move. There is a reason why many people are in Christ but never usable within a dispensation because they are absent from where the Spirit of God is speaking the word of God. He said, he that has an ear, meaning nobody has that kind of ear. It's not this one. Are we together? Let him hear. The secret to being relevant in a dispensation is not making friends with all the pastors. It's not making sure that there are posters everywhere. It's finding out where is the word of God. There is what we call this 
present truth. Say it after me. This, the emphasis of the spirit within a dispensation. Now, the character of God, are we getting blessed already? I told you I'll be saying so many things, so bear with me. The character of God is such that, you see, for every dispensation, there is a body of knowledge about God allocated for that dispensation. Like a curriculum of study about God given, ministered to by the prophetic and the apostolic. They open the body of Christ within that civilization to the scope of that dimension of God. No matter how they fast and pray, they are not allowed to cross that mark. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I'm saying this because of what I'm about to teach. I've not started my message yet. I'm preparing our hearts so that when we start, we can, we can follow along. Are we together? There were certain things the prophets wanted to see. Even though they prophesied about it, they were sad because they wanted to enter it as an experience. But boundaries were given their dispensation that they could only prophesy. We saw the efforts that David made to see the days of the Messiah. It was David that said, the Lord said to my Lord. He was seeing the coronation of Jesus after his victory. One thing to step into it, but... But then the Bible says, you are a chosen generation. Listen. Now, this is the foundation for the things I'm going to be sharing. That God sampled many generations and chose one. It's an election of grace. You are a chosen generation. And what makes you chosen is not just his will, but there is a body of knowledge that God has reserved that a generation, whichever generation I choose, I will allocate that dimension to that generation to know about me. <laughs> Who would have known, brothers and sisters, that you can pick up a little gadget and with one dial, you can be talking to someone in another nation. There were scientists in other dispensations, but there was a boundary. Are we together now? And now, not because we did anything of our own, it just so happened that that discovery is happening in your dispensation. So it is spiritually. There are dimensions that we are going to find out that we are entering. That if you are not guided well, you may even think that you are in error. Because you will search history and not find any record of the dealings of God with men through that dimension. You will see gifts of the spirit that you may not exactly find. Now, that does not mean it is not of God. Remember, it was Paul the Apostle who came and gave order. The theme of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14 is that all things be done decently and in order. Because the then church had the outpouring of the Spirit. They were manifesting dimensions that were strange. They didn't know it was called word of knowledge. They didn't know it was called discerning of spirit. They just saw that there was an effulgence of a dimension of the Spirit that was strange. And Paul said, all right, sit down. I need to coordinate your understanding. It was Paul that began to give these classifications to the point that order would not be lost. But it doesn't mean that all God never reveals himself in whole. The character of God is such that his operation is dimensional. You rise through faithfulness. So all that they saw in the church in Corinth could not be all that there is about the spirit of God. There is the word of God that is embedded in scripture. But there is the word of God that is embedded in the character of God. Let me teach you something about the word of God. <laughs> there is the word of God that is embedded in scripture. Meaning something similar to that pattern has happened. So it was captured and recorded so that it can aid your understanding. But there is the word of God that is enshrined in his character, only ministered to by the Spirit. You will not find a verse or scripture directly about it. But the Spirit of God, who is also the one who is responsible for the understanding of the word of God, will bring that body of reality into your spirit. When the apostles walked the earth, this was not available. What was their word of God? When they prayed 
and understood the word, what did they understand? There was nothing to read. The Pentateuch, the Torah, and the Psalms, they were kept in the temple. They were not given to people. So when they said the word of God is quick and powerful, which one? You see, listen carefully. If you do not understand this, we may never, never be able to walk effectively with the Spirit. The scripture is a compendium of the character of God with respect to his dealings with men. It has already happened, but it was kept there for our learning that we, through the comfort of scripture, that's what the Bible says, is that true? That all the things that are written here, they are for our learning. But there is still an unfolding of the manifestation of God. And you will find out that although you may not find it here in terms of a direct verse and chapter, the word of God, the living logos, is still writing that reality to you. Are we together now? And so you must, you must grow in understanding these dimensions of the word of God. Otherwise, you will reject a lot of spiritual things. A lot of spiritual things. A lot of spiritual things. If as I'm ministering now, someone starts shouting under the anointing just like that, you may not find a verse and chapter directly that agrees with it. But what you see, now this experience will now be recorded for our children. When our children are reading, they will now know that this possibility in addition to what is here, is still of God. We are now introducing a dimension. We are, not, we are not fighting the word of God, but we are introducing a dimension that has been sealed and kept. When John saw some things, he said, seal it. John, make sure this information does not come. Seal it. It's for an appointed time. But it is an information that will be revealed, but for an appointed time. It is this body of knowledge that was kept for many dispensations just like there was a body of knowledge that was kept that was prohibited for man because it would interrupt his work with God it was that body of knowledge that was enshrined in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there was something hidden it was not about eating a fruit are we together it was a compendium of knowledge that had the potential to adulterate God's agenda, it was kept and was, man, don't touch of it. Are we together now? When the fallen angels came to the daughters of men, they supplied them an information that was spiritual, but not part of the curriculum of God for man. It is not every knowledge. How do we? The Bible says the secret things, listen carefully. He said the secret things belong to the Lord. Is that true? Um, how did he put it now? But that those that have been revealed, there are things, not everything about God can be revealed to you. There is a part of him he wants you to know. There is a part of him that remains a mystery to him. It is kept to him. You will never be granted that access. This is what Lucifer didn't know. So when Lucifer was given a dimension of the light of the knowledge of God, he believed that was all. So having exhausted the scope, he said, let's fight God. And then another mystery came out that was not part of what he knew. You see that? Yes. So I'm saying that to stimulate our desire and our appetite for spiritual things that much more than just opening your Bible and reading, we must crave for genuine encounters that supply dimensions that are, are relevant for our day. There is a body of knowledge that God has, has put together for this revival generation. And it's a privilege. It's a privilege. When God began to move pastor and all the men of God to put this program, it's not just to, to advance a man's agenda is an attempt to make room for the spirit to say lord as the as this body of knowledge is being distributed around specific territories we make room for you let part of that reality be captured within this environment and let me tell you your usefulness in the kingdom 
is based on how you cooperate with that agenda. You see that now? The Bible, please look at me. The Bible records specific events. Did you know that historically there were many events that coincided with Bible days, but the Bible didn't seem interested in them because anything that was not directly tied to God's agenda was not captured in this place. Even if it looked like a digression, there was something about it that still related to this. So if God were to come to Abel Kuta now for one year and a book were to be written, you will find out that many things happening on the road here will not be captured in that book because they have no direct bearing. There will be chapters and verses written about the Abel Kuta Believers Conference. And you will wonder, ah, but while this was happening, a bike man hit another bike man somewhere. Yet it will not make that book because it has nothing to contribute to the advancement of God's kingdom. How did I get here? The anointing, okay. The word of God, listen carefully, that the anointing follows the word. So if you find out that you are not fresh in the anointing and you find out that the voice of the spirit is dimming over your ears, it may not necessarily be that you are backsliding. Is that you have lost touch with the move where the word is now. Just because God is not doing something now the way he did yesterday doesn't mean he's not the one doing it. Your ability to stand upon your watch like a watchman and see what he's saying. If God moves left, you follow him. If God decides that he will move right tomorrow, you want to move right. They say, but God always moves left. You say, no, for now, he has chosen to move right. So whoever can have that spiritual flexibility, which takes a lot of humility, because every time you move, your ego moves too. And so the ability to drop it down and say, I will still move. Your reward for that flexibility is the grace for now. For being flexible enough to know that this one, it may be uncomfortable with me, but I know this is God. And I sustain the fortitude in the spirit to move with him. That reward is that God puts an anointing upon you for that season. So there are many people who are anointed and they find out that they love God with respect to their secret place. They are okay, but with respect to God's agenda, there is no role for them. And they are wondering, 10 years ago in Abel Kuta, I used to be part of God's program. But when it switched, you didn't have the discernment. The last move of God always fights the next move of God. You see that? Because it is difficult. Difficult. Samuel had been used, Eli had been used greatly by God. But now the eyes of Eli began to be dim. And God now called Samuel. Samuel wake up. He went to Eli. Eli said, go back to sleep. Eli was not a fake man of God. But he had not seen this move before. But thank God he was the same Eli that helped Samuel. See, next time he speaks, say, speak Lord, I am listening. Our generation... We love God, but we are not passionate about Him. It tells on our refusal to bend to His ways. It tells by how we are so egocentric in our spiritual approach. And, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. It's true. The flexibility to adjust to what the Spirit wants to do for the sake of His agenda and for the sake of His hand upon a generation is difficult for many of us. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Not because he was Jesus, but for the first time, the father would find a human vessel 100% aligned. That everything the father was thinking, that's what Jesus was doing. No difficulty. There was no time the Holy Spirit had to warn him to say, Jesus, I think you are getting it wrong this way. You see the Holy Spirit warning prophets sometimes, no, 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 come back. You see the disalignment, so they come back. Jesus never needed to repent. 
Repentance was not a possibility. He was the perfect image. Every other person had to repent, realign. Here and there you find out that the spirit is this way and you are this way, then he calls you back, repentance. But not once was it ever recorded that Jesus Christ veered off. The only time that would have happened was in Gethsemane. But he quickly said, nevertheless, I will not corrupt that track record, not my will, but your will be done. So the difficulty in the move of God is finding vessels that are aligned enough to be that malleable and flexible enough for the Holy Spirit to be able to flow in and through them. It doesn't have to break your organizational structure. It doesn't have to even scatter your self-worth. Everything that is of God comes with excellency. If a move of God is messed up, flesh made it happen. It's not God that rubbishes people and their churches. No, 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 no. It was an intermingling of spirit and flesh that makes it look like this one. Everything is credited to God. God came and destroyed my church or destroyed Abel Kuta with a new move. It's not true. It's not true. Are we together? So I truly, truly salute pastor and I salute every dear servant of God here for cooperating together to put a meeting. And I salute you too, dear people of God, for having the fortitude to come and sit down and learn. Many arrogant people will tell you God is everywhere. The veil has been torn. I can access God directly and it doesn't matter what God is saying. This error is why many people will find themselves far from what God is doing. You can be in Christ, but never be in the move of God. Look at this. Saul was once anointed to be king, but a time came when Saul veered off the program of God and God needed to do something new. Samuel kept weeping to intercede for Saul. And here's what God said. He says, Samuel, how long will you weep seeing that I have rejected Saul? Not as one who is of the covenant, but as king. As one who is of the covenant, you are still with me. But as king, no way. So God can still love you as a son. But as the man of God he will use to introduce God in a generation, it's possible. You can be edged. It's true. God's end time agenda is real. In 2005, I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw something very strange. I saw the map of the world. And I began to see the move of the Spirit in strange ways. I saw the anointing of the Spirit going from Europe to America and then to Asia. And I saw Africa. I started seeing a lot of strange things. And the Lord was ministering to me and showing me scripture for this. Please listen carefully. And a lot happened that I would not go into now for time's sake. But then the Lord began to speak to me strangely. Number one, that Africa is God's firstborn. Look, when it comes to this thing, don't mind history. Just listen to me. Africa is God's firstborn. Are we together? And God's formation for revival is always king, priest, prophet. The threefold cord that cannot be broken. It is an order and an ordinance. It's a system of operation. There will always be in a territory a king. There will always be a prophet. There will always be a priest. That formation. Are we together now? And that distribution had happened in different dispensations. But several things corrupted them. Africa is yet to present the dimension of revival. A chance has not been given to Africa yet. This is the season when Africa as a continent will present Christ to the world. Europe were given a chance. America were given a chance. But that rejected stone called Africa. You see, the rejected stone is not just a parable in the Bible. The rejected stone, stone, is a real territory. It's, it's, it's an environment. One of the sons of Noah that was cursed. Are we seeing that? 
the cause that happened was remedied already in identifying with the sufferings of Christ. Remember that the son of Noah was caused. That's Africa, that a servant of servants shall you be because he beheld his father's nakedness. And that one is another mystery because it was not just physical nakedness. He beheld something deeper than that. A father will not cause his child just for seeing him naked. It was more than that. Are we together now? But then remember that God in his wisdom created a system of reversal with Simon of Cyrene, the African, the only continent that helped Jesus to the cross. When Jesus was going to the cross, no continent was represented except Africa in Simon. And the Bible says that if we partake of the sufferings of Christ, then we must also partake of the glory that follows. You see that? So it was a deep mystery. It was not just Simon carrying the cross. Jesus was tired and every continent rejected him. Every continent came when he was healing. But when Jesus was tired, the continents left him. But Africa came. Let's carry the cross. Took that cross right with him. You see that? And that mystery you see is a very deep mystery. It's not just human stories. So Africa must be given a chance as a continent, as a corporate people to reveal Jesus. And let me tell you something powerful. Africa is the continent that will return Christ back. It's true. It's true. It's true. We will arise and fulfill our destiny. We will arise and recover all that was lost. That's the theme for Africa. We will arise in mighty victory. We will arise. Yes, we will arise. So I began to see the move of God. And I saw Nigeria. You've heard me say it. That this our country that we call Nigeria was not amalgamated by Lord Lugard. No. Nigeria, listen carefully. Nigeria is found in Isaiah chapter 18. Is the land whose rivers divide. It's a mystery. It's not just because men of God have said it. There are five elements of the supernatural. Everything supernatural God does in the earth is done through these five elements. One of it is water. One of it is fire. One of it is light. One of it is wind. Are we together? There is no spiritual thing that happens on earth supernaturally without any of these elements contributing. So God used one of them to write his name in Nigeria. You call it River Niger and Benway, but that is Yah, the name, the signature of God. Listen, it's, it's a code that God put like the stones of Jacob. Remember that the Abraham had enacted a place and written the name of God in a place and left. And Jacob came and meandered that place in the night. The name of God was written there. And here's what the Bible says. He just laid down. And he didn't know that that encounter had created a portal. Whether anybody detected it or not did not matter. But now a man would lie down and see angels ascending and descending. And at the top of it was God himself. And when he spoke, he said, Ah, God is in this place. Like many people will soon say, So God is in Nigeria. And I do not know. Because it was a code. That thing that was happening with our fathers in slavery is the same thing like Abraham. A secret place. Lord, when your move comes, this is the stone. Jacob came and laid down there. And the Bible records that all of a sudden, Jacob was not praying, no, don't forget. Jacob was not fasting. He was even frustrated. Yet because of that portal, he said, this is the house of God, the gate of of heaven the gate of heaven a day will come when it will be an honor for someone to rise from Nigeria 
and go and preach in another pulpit abroad. It will not just be just because of showmanship, but because of this body of knowledge that has been sealed and given to a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar generation, a time will come. I have seen it and the Bible declares it so. That rejected stone that will later become the chief cornerstone. Are we together? So brothers and sisters, what you see happening in Abel Kuta here, I'm giving you a deeper sense of prophecy. Don't just sit and think it's a wonderful program. No. This program you see that is happening today has been recorded in the boils of prophecy that at such and such a time as this, for the sake of the move of God, a man will arise. The problem is many of us, when we read Bible and we see the Bible says somebody will arise, we always think Paul, Gabriel. Not everybody the Bible sp spoke about has manifested. We are still here. It was written about us, not prophetically, directly, that in prophecy, it's just that you will not see it as Pastor Shola, so you will not think it's you. Jesus kept reading Isaiah, and he said, but this is me now. This is me. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. Please fill me up Abalakato Till I overflow Listen, let me tell you how the Bible speaks The Bible will not say a pastor from Abel Kuta will arise The Bible can use a parable And say out of a place of stones a, An individual This is how the Bible talks so when you read it, you will think it's something that has happened. One day, when the spirit of revival comes, something about you, that deep in you, you will open that verse and say, ah, who is this person? The Bible says a virgin shall conceive. He never called her Mary. I'm sure every time Mary liked a man and wanted to go, the, that prophecy shielded her. No. Mary, you must be protected. Your assignment is to give birth. My assignment to give birth. So, listen. All people are equal. It's true. But this agenda has separated men. There are some of you, even before you, you got born again, you never had a chance to be bad. The first person that tried you, the dream he had in the night, God said, no, this is a choice soul. There is something that has to do with this lady forget that she's not born again although born in a house of witchcraft help that lady please help those under the anointing now although born in a place of witchcraft yet nothing could touch you nobody was praying oh, nobody was fasting you pass you got you got a school abroad you got visa an angel stopped you you couldn't go out because there was something within this territory. You had to play that role. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. That's why I told you if you ever find yourself in this conference you didn't come on your own you may think you saw poster but it's just your eyes forget what your eyes saw there was a chauffeur that came and sounded in this city where are the people and for no reason the Spirit of God began to orchestrate do you know why because there is a move of God what you see happening in this city is happening in many other places in this nation is, is a chauffeur because an army is about to rise Nigeria God's firstborn it's true it's true it's true 
is you. Listen. Never mind your current situation. Never mind all those things. The Bible says, I reckon. I come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time, it says they are not worthy. The constraints that you saw David in the wilderness didn't mean that there was no kingship on him. Some of you here, you came from regions. You will never believe you are part of the army I'm talking about because you look at your life and say, Apostle, from where? But don't forget this God. Oh. From where? A healing anointing? A prophet? Me? From where? Where will it come from? Listen. That's why you find out that you see people who are prophetic in destiny, the occurrences in their lives are a clue that there's something unusual. It worked for everybody in your family like this. When it got to you, something happened. And you always say, why is it always me? Brothers and sisters, that battle predates your being born. Look at Jesus. Look at Moses. It didn't start from us. It's just because what we read is scripture, not revelation. So we don't see it. Your eyes must be open to connect it to you today. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, I was sharing with pastor when we came in. The kind of army that God is going to raise in this place. Some of you listen. You will never believe it. You may be in the crowd now scattered. You heard pastor poetry. You heard the great men and women of God. And you just came to be blessed by men of God. Whereas in the realm of the spirit it's been concluded. That on this day when she comes, let this be the time, the mantle, the grace of her destiny would be released. Our session in the morning is brief. We have a lot of time in the evening. But let me tell you this. If you don't believe what I'm saying, then you wasted your time in this conference. Because truly, there are people, even ministries. There are some of us men and women of God. You may, do you know that not everything that happens that is on the negative that is demonic. I pray that God will give us eyes to see. If Saul's donkey did not get missing, Saul will never meet Samuel. Notice, Samuel trivialized the issue of donkey. When he saw Saul, he said, leave that donkey issue. God brought you to receive an anointing. It was not donkey anything. The moment Samuel saw Saul, the donkey started going back home. Was the donkey missing? No. It's true. You must believe this. I, I sense, I sense every day, more than before, something is happening in Nigeria already. Thank God for the fathers. But Eli, Eli is already waking Samuel up. Samuel, arise. Believe what I'm telling you. I speak to you by the Spirit. If Samuel does not wake up fast, then there will be trouble. There shouldn't be gap between Eli and Samuel. As Eli's eye is dimming, Samuel should be waking up concurrently. You have taken all the glory You have taken all the worship You have taken all my pain You have taken all my soul You have made them yours I give the highest praise to the King have taken all dominion you have taken all the powers you have taken all the strength you have taken all the wisdom you have been listen there is a move of God that is coming in this nation 
that has never been seen men and women men of fire the bible says blow the trumpet in zion it says sound the alarm it didn't say blow the trumpet any other place in zion if you did not hear that trumpet you are not in zion if you are in zion there is that clarion call you will hear it says sound the alarm sound the alarm on my holy mountain then you will see people who are weak apostle i came from a village nobody has ever risen and god says don't worry you are part of that army here you come apostle i am weak i went to school late i entered 100 level at 30 years god says still come he's choosing people a chosen generation help that man under the anointing a chosen generation a chosen generation by night i will share with you the character of that army but listen let me tell you something we are going to pray i think i should just stop here that prayer tonight something from eternity has been calling you and your prayer this afternoon is lord connect me that that prophecy that prophecy that my destiny is all about that prophecy that my ministry is all about i didn't just come to abelkuta to have a church just like every other pastor i had you you spoke to me i should be abroad but you brought me here Cry Abelkuta. Let there be a cry of the Spirit. Lord, there is something you are doing in this season. Not just born for a reason, but born for a season. Lo, I come as it is written of me, as it is written of me, decided of me in the volume of the book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. The Bible says, hold on please. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus stood up for to read. To read the prophecy of Isaiah. And Jesus stood and said the spirit of the Lord. He was not talking about someone else. It is the spirit of God that will help you find yourself. That you open and you see a woman shall bear a child and the holy ghost will say that's not mary that's you it is true that there is something from this word for you for you for you what do you think the attacks in your life have been about just for you no you are too small as an individual to command that level of attack it's the size of your destiny it's the size of the prophecy I'm speaking to a man of God here. What do you think this, this challenge around your church is about? Because there is something. When Moses was born, they slaughtered children for his sake. When Jesus was born, women lost children. Listen. Listen. Listen, this generation will no longer be impressed by Rema. This generation is not in ignorance. There is no dimension of Rema you will bring to just make someone say, wow, it's a joke. They will listen and just clap. While you are talking, there are too many men of God with too many dimensions already online. And you will not come and stand before a congregation just to impress them. You bring all this word, people will clap for you, but they will leave you. They will respect you just because you, you are a good student. But they know what their spirits cry for. And let me tell you, let me tell you this.
this army will never keep quiet till they find where that living water is something in your spirit will keep moving you from meeting to meeting it's not rebellion you want to stay in one place but something says come for this conference no i love my pastor i thank god for him but no this hunger we share the grace but i've not shared the grace something in me there is a hunger I came to initiate you into an experience deeper than preaching, deeper than Rema, deeper than just talking. It's an experience. There is a place of encounter. There is a place where you are not trying. It's not that you are trying to have faith. It's a reality like Pastor was sharing. All these things we keep doing, we will keep mocking ourselves. On he said that I may know him, that I may know him. It's an encounter. He said, but I know whom I believe. It's not that I've been told about him. I know and I am persuaded. That's faith. Persuaded. Persuaded. Just pray one prayer. And then I'll just pray for us for two or three minutes. I really apologize. Tonight we'll have time to just prophesy and, and pray for the sick. But I'll, I'll at least I'll, I'll just pray for you. But um, I want to pray now. But I want to just speak to one person before I pray for you. There is a lady, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on her now. She's going to shout loud for everybody to hear in this auditorium. Please bring her. Now I want to speak to her. It's not, it's not anything mechanical. This is the spirit of God now. You see. So when that happens, please, I, 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 see, I see the angels of the Lord. No, that's not the lady. This is a different thing. Don't worry about those under the anointing. When, when that happens. Now listen to me. We're going to pray. But brothers and sisters, please hear me. Let me tell you something about the spirit. Let's, let's, let's trust God to challenge ourselves in this conference to touch reality. It's painful to keep doing something that you yourself are not truly sure of. That you can just sit and say, ah, sorry, oh God, don't be offended, but am I sure? Look at what I just did now. What if I were lying? Think of the embarrassment to the name of God. Think of the embarrassment to the organizers. Think of the embarrassment. What is it that a man can touch that will make God owe him his presence? Like a debt that he must pay. If you will allow me in the next 10 minutes, I want to drive you to that realm. That realm where you will touch reality and substance in the spirit that that you will stand and you are like a god upon the earth they looked at paul and barnabas they called them zeus and hermes it's not about being arrogant is that you have become a throne upon the earth you legislate on behalf of a government that is real you are not trying to fake this thing is god speaking to us the move of God that is coming will have no room for trial and error. We are circumspect in understanding. Otherwise, you know, I didn't even go to my message this morning. I wanted to teach you. I hope we'll have time. But I was going to teach you the mystery of the two witnesses. The mystery of Enoch and Elijah. These are the two offices that precede the move of God. There's no time, but we, we didn't get there. Enoch was the seventh man from creation according to Genesis 5. And the Bible records that that man was an embodiment of a dimension of intimacy. Enoch is not just a man. Enoch is a spiritual system. Is the spiritual system allocated for understanding intimacy. Are we together? And then Elijah. Elijah is not just a prophet. Elijah is a system. That's why Elijah as a person goes to heaven comes back in John the Baptist, comes back again. Jezebel is not a woman, it's a system. 
So these systems only found men that gave them, that hosted them, but they are ancient systems. The first manifestation of Elijah was in Noah, not Elijah. You must sustain the eyes of the spirit to see beyond the physical actors and to see the spiritual synergy. The individual actors may die, but the system continues. Jezebel dies. Elijah goes to heaven. Jezebel reappears in Herodias. Elijah reappears in John the Baptist. We are going to pray. We are going to cry. Some of you will find out after this morning session, nobody will need to pray for your prayer life again. It will shock you how some of you will not be able to sleep this night. You will stretch. This is how Jesus empowered people. There is, an, there is a force. There is an operation of the spirit that compels you to enter dimensions. Now, there are many of us here who are almost missing it, if not for this conference. Because you have been so impressed with your revel of revelation. There's no room for the things of God again. And now God is stepping up the bar. And showing you how bare you are. And you are saying Lord I repent of pride. You showed me a dimension of truth. And I'm almost carried away because I'm doing very well. I return to you. Don't be embarrassed about it. It's how God lifts men. He allows eternity to swallow up everything you have done in time and reduces you back with a fresh hunger for God. Hallelujah. I don't know who this dear lady is. I'm not prophesying now because of time. But I'm seeing an angel pouring oil. This girl lying down. And the Lord is saying that he's bringing a visitation to her family. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. May that visitation that I see in the spirit, as I stretch my hands over this dear lady, I decree and declare that visitation by the angel of the Lord's presence, the Lord himself will confirm that visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I establish it in the realm of the spirit and I decree and declare that it is so. It is so. It is so in the name of Jesus Christ. It is so in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray? These two gentlemen, this guy, you see him? I, can you see me? That, that gentleman, you looking at me, you and the other gentleman, they are not seeing me. No, right this, this third row, that yes, two of you lift your hands. Yes, two of you. I saw an angel pouring oil. I don't know who these gentlemen, these gentlemen are, but I stretch my hands from here in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will begin to step into dimensions. I see the spirit of prayer and supplication coming on two of you. It's, it's a dimension of the spirit of prayer that you have never seen. It will come upon your life. It will come upon your ministry. Can we pray for five minutes? Now listen. Hold on. In the next five minutes, I'm going to leave you alone and God. I don't know what you want to do this five minutes. But let there be a cry from your spirit. Please, let's lay our golden crowns. And in the next five minutes, Mike, you just play softly. You clash the cymbal. And we're going to cry and say, Lord, in this move of the spirit, let me be featured. Let me be featured. As you are raising men, as you are raising men, students, pray. Pray, cry, let's cry to the God of heaven. For I will walk a walk in your days that if it were told you, you will not believe. I will walk a walk in your church, in your ministry. I will walk a walk in your city and in your land. 
It is the character of the latter rain. It is the character of the latter rain. He said, ask me for rain in the time of the latter rain. And I will pour the spirit of prayer and supplication upon the house of David. Like the Asuda Street Revival, like the revivals of old, oh God, we present ourselves as the generation of Jacob that will seek your face. Regardless of church, regardless of spiritual affiliations. We may not agree on everything. But Lord, we present ourselves as a womb in the spirit. Let there be an incubation. An incubation. The seed for this revival. Pray. Let there be a restoration of the ordinances of God. A restoration of spiritual patterns. Open up the gate. Will you open up the doors? We are crying for the portals of revival to be open in the spirit. Open up the gate. Will you open up the case over families, over territories, over regions? Hallelujah. One last prayer point, and we're done with this morning session. Listen, listen to me. Hallelujah. Something happened between Elijah and Elisha that extended the program of God. But Gehazi preached that order. Are we together? Gehazi would never carry that grace because of something that was not correct in his life. Listen carefully. And the Bible says that Elisha died. In God's system, people don't die with the anointing. No. It is only the bodies that should live. But the system of continuity must be transferred. The Bible says, whilst Elisha, Elisha died, there was an open sepulcher and they were bringing a dead man. Listen carefully. The potentials of God sabotage because a generation was not ready to receive and a man went to the grave with it. The Bible says that dead man meandered the open sepulcher and touched the bones of a man who is already dead. Are we together? And all of a sudden, the dead man jacks back to life, confirming if that dead man never came back to life, we will believe Elisha is gone and is gone. Yet there was something in that grave. Many people have transited with anointings and graces allocated for certain dimensions of God. Listen, when you see a dispensation suffering a particular spiritual deficiency, nobody received that mantle from the preceding generation. So there was no system of supply to the body. For instance, if you find out that all, for instance, just an example, all the pastors in Abel Kuta love God but they don't pray, that meant that whoever carried that torchlight before that generation of pastors, nobody was available for the transference of that grace for prayer. Look at your city spiritually. Identify the gaps in grace and anointing. It's a revelation of dimensions 
that have either been criticized out or not received through honor are we together now but in this conference one of the things god is doing is like the hair of samson because when elijah comes he restores all things are we together now the mystery of enoch and elijah Elijah is a representation of the spirit of prayer but it's also a grace for the restoration every time God is about to show up in a land Elijah must come are we together look at your church if you are prosperous but you find out that all your members love God but they don't seem to pray there is a dimension that has not been received to remedy that lapse so one of the things God is creating, there will always be a vacuum somewhere. Your assignment is to identify it in this conference and open your spirit to say, Lord, why is it that I pray so much but no revelation, no influence, no prosperity? What dimension did I ignore? And that dimension is supplied you. Are we together? Let me pray for you. We have to round up. Please, like Pastor said, I, I wouldn't mind even if it means for Pastor to just come and re-emphasize it. This is not just for showmanship, but please, I want you to come tonight with your heart open. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to minister to people. But one of the things I pray and trust God that he would do tonight, and I know that is the burden of your pastor and all the men of God that are represented here, is that let's be able to host a dimension of God in this place tonight. Are we in agreement on this? That we will, we will align ourselves in such a way and a manner that God will just come and sit upon us like a hand upon her eggs until certain things are broken and released that after this conference it will be said that this is not the first time we're holding a Belkuta conference but that this one something came into this city that the next time God grants us grace to come we will know you can trace it like certain moves of God they will say oh Apostle Babalola this is when it started there should be a move of God that must be traced to this but I pray for you I don't know what has made you satisfied spiritually where you are I don't know what has killed the hunger, just, just like Pastor Shegun was sharing here. I don't know what has granted complacency, but I pray in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be such a dimension of hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your understanding. You have done your best. You have books. You have concordances, you have tapes, you have CDs, you are, a, you are studious. But with the bankruptcy of that miracle of your understanding being opened, all of those things will just cause you to enter a state where the Bible says ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge, the comprehension. I open the mind of your spirit to comprehend spiritual realities. In the name of Jesus Christ access to light and illumination i speak it upon your spirit in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you please help that gentleman i pray finally for you many of us know the holy spirit but in theory many of us know his power we've seen people under the influence of the spirit many of us know his miracles but many of us do not know him Truly, I pray this for you from the depth of my heart. I don't know what God did to me to help me with the Holy Spirit, but I cry to God and I pray, may that same miracle happen to you. Yeah. That the same way an evil spirit enters a man and seek to, seeks to live out his characteristics through that man, that you will be so full of the Holy Ghost that everything about your life will be an effulgence of his presence. Then I pray for you. Some persons here may be under some urgency that cannot wait till evening. I decree and declare to you right now, whatever it is that is a cause for alarm, there is no need to panic in this earth because everything works by laws, including restoration. I declare 
that as a token of your commitment coming to wait from morning and then you have other sessions now before evening that between now and the evening meeting let there be a unique miracle that God will give you now please I want you to believe me I'm not just speaking casually before you believe a man find out about him don't just believe especially for those of you Oh, this is your first time coming for the conference I pray it again you see the centurion said for I am a man under authority and he said I say to one go and he goes not because of who I am but because of a government that that I am loyal to I pray for you again I'm not suggesting you see prophecy is twofold as you've heard me say there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy it gives you direction but there is the creative dimension it captures scenes that have no business being featured in your life and makes them happen. That's the creative dimension. I'm praying for you again that between now and evening, may my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God will do in 10 minutes something you would have thought will take 10 years to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please wave your hands to Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pagotos koto breka teke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.